Well, golly, you just warm the cockles of my heart stopping in like this. I sure do appreciate it. Hi, folks. I'm John. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Monday, November 14th. Now, I'm not going to do anything different here. I'm going to gab a little bit at the beginning of this video because I'm trying to buy you time to get you that news. That's the whole reason I do this, folks, so that you can get as much information in the little time that we share together. And there is a ton of news in there. I've personally read all that news. It all comes from the OTC market, about a week's worth there. Oldest is at the top, newest is at the bottom. If you haven't had time to comb the news like I've been, I've already done it for you. Just take the time to read read it. Now, as I said, that's all OTC market news. We look at a lot of OTC stocks, but we also look at penny stocks and they are not the same thing. A penny stock is any stock under $5 and those are on every single market. So don't be surprised if we're looking at stocks on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange, but they will be under five bucks. Now, when I do my research on an OTC stock specifically, this is a site I use. For good reason, it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. That's the information we're constantly looking for every single day for every single stock. Why be running over to Google sorting through decades of information for all of that? Start here, all they post is current information. And if by chance you don't find what you're looking for, then you can run over to Google. It's always there waiting for you. But this will save you a lot of hassle and time, promise. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. She's a wee bit better than last week, but not anything to get excited about. I'm going to refresh this and hope for a bump. No bump. All right, our dollar volume has come up. We have hit $2 billion in a day. We haven't been there for a while, but our old average used to be 2.1, so we still got room to grow. Share volume. God, we're not getting anywhere fast. We've been stuck in the 5 billion range for at least a week. We need to be up at 10 billion. That really gets the market moving. Trades, it's the only bright light here. Again, we are over 300,000. I think this is the third time this month. We have been at six, 700,000 trades a day a long time ago. So we've got all sorts of ceiling to catch up with. But we have broke 300,000 about three times this month. Hopefully that is a trend that will continue. Now, I've got a few stocks I want to talk to you about today. Some you're probably familiar with and some you aren't, but they were all catching my eye today. Let me show you what I was looking at. Now, this is a stock most of us are real familiar with. This is TXTM Protex Mobility. Now, if you're not familiar with the company, real briefly, they did a reverse merger not too long ago with the South African Cannabis Company. Now, this South African Cannabis Company isn't just working with the permission of the government. They are working with cooperation in conjunction with the government. One of the upper management of the South African Cannabis Company, Dr. J, was appointed an ambassadorship for South Africa to help other hemp and cannabis companies to get in line as they come online. Now, the investors, we've been waiting for this thing to blow up. We see it on the platform. We see the smoke coming. We've just been waiting for it to launch. And then all of a sudden, the next time we look at it, bink, it's on its side. We ain't launching now. And there's not a lot of information here. So I want to share what there is because I'm sure you're probably concerned about it as well. So they finished today at 0022 with almost 64% drop. They are now caveat emptar, the skull and crossbones. Caveat emptar is Latin for buyer beware. They tell us here that buyer beware means that the OTC Markets Group has determined there is a public interest concern associated with the company. Now, I got to be honest, folks, this skull and crossbones is the absolute worst designation you can get on the OTC market. Worse than the expert market. The expert market is saved for companies that are late on their filings. It's an administrative problem and all they got to do is get those filings caught up and they're back on the open market. It's not that easy with a CE. First off, we don't even know what the problem is. They never tell us on the OTC markets. So unless the company comes forth and tells you what the problem is, you're probably never going to know. Now, they do tell us here that they have a stock promotion going on. Now, what this means is that they are most likely paying somebody to write editorials or do interviews with them, something like that. 
or to be completely honest, I haven't seen any editorials. I was doing some jumping around trying to get to the bottom of this skull and crossbones, and I didn't see anything out there. So I don't know why they say that they have a stock promotion right now. And more to the point, the company doesn't understand it either. So I'm going to share the information I have found, the only information we do have. It is over here at Twitter. Now, Mr. Pluey, Upper Management, and Dr. J, Upper Management, both have their own Twitter accounts on here, and they are discussing this situation. But the company has their own Twitter account, too, and that's the one we're going to look at. So we got two pieces of information that were put out on this tweet, one from the 11th and one from the 10th. Protex Pharma tells us on the 11th that management is aware of the CE designation on the OTC markets. The company and its SEC council are in contact with the OTC markets and hope to resolve the matter expeditiously. Fundamentals of the company remain unchanged. We will keep our shareholders updated. We thank you for your patience and understanding. Then they had this come out on the 10th. Protex Mobility today addressed activity that caused the OTC markets to place a stock promotion designation alongside the company's symbol on the otcmarkets.com website on November 3rd. The company wants to reaffirm that it has not participated in any activity that would have prompted this designation and has not paid for any promotional activity, as confirmed by the OTC markets to company management and its SEC council. This is being addressed as a matter of priority by management and the SEC. Problem is, is on the expert market, on the CE, you cannot buy the shares. You can sell them, they'll let you sell at whatever loss is on the board at that time, but you can never buy in, which is a real shame because after a 64% drop, she's looking healthy to get into. And we know chances are she's gonna be coming back into the green, back into the pink, if you will, and she's gonna launch sooner or later. Right now, the price is outstanding, but we can't touch it. Let's go take a look at that chart. So let's take a gander at TXTM. This is Think or Swim. We're going to do our charting on here. This is a free trading platform you get just for signing up for the free trading account with TD Ameritrade. Keep your account open and you can use this anytime you like for free. So this is a six month, four hour chart. We had a huge run here with TXTM in June. This is when they announced that reverse merger with the South African Cannabis Company. She went up a thousand percent and basically came down a thousand percent, hitting the floor right here, bouncing off of it, looking good, and then she came right back down. Now we see that she started falling here on November 1st. Now they told us it was November 3rd, they got that promo designation. So why it's falling on the 1st and the 2nd, I honestly don't know. I see we had a reprieve right here in the middle when nothing had changed except she hit the 200, got a bounce off of that, and then just went back to tumbling down the hill. And right now the technicals look like she's not done. Our RSI is in the trash, the floor is at 30, she's at 19. Our MACD is pushing down. Our PPO is pushing down. Everything looks like the price still wants to continue falling. Now, I'm going to come right on into that five-day, five-minute, and I'm going to warn you, it's not very pretty. e -gads. So, it was five days ago. She was up here at 0 .01 a penny, basically. She has been slowly falling down the hill like Jack and Jill until she got right here and pulled a Humpty Dumpty and fell down to double zero one three. Folks, that is almost a thousand percent drop right there. She has been going sideways, waiting on this 50 day SMA. You can see that it just sucked her on into it, pushed it up, and now she has come back down and is laying on the 50 day SMA. And the technicals really don't look like she wants to move far. I don't expect this to jump tomorrow. I don't expect it to actually jump until it comes off of the CE, the caveat emptor, skull and crossbones. Now this is an excellent price. I know we would all love to buy in right now, but you can't buy a CE or an expert market until they come back on the market. All we can do is sell. I know, nobody wants to sell at this price. So the next best thing is to sit wait and watch. And we're going to wait to see how soon this turns over. The company seems to be on the ball. They seem to be handling it, but they don't tell us a whole lot. So we've got our fingers crossed and we're speculating that things are going to get better soon. And when they do, I do expect this to jump and bounce. What it's going to do after that, 
God only knows. Hopefully they come out with a piece of good news to give it an extra boost. Let's go take a look at another company that caught my eye today. Here's another stock that was catching my eye today. This is ticker SPOM, SPO Global Inc. I'm not too sure if you've heard about this one. There's not a whole lot going on with it. There was no news today, but surprisingly enough, they did release a financial disclosure yesterday on Sunday. Who knew? Now I saw the stock running today, so I came over here and saw that was the only new piece of information, so I jumped into it. I read through it and I didn't see anything too impressive. They're a Chinese company, they're a pharmaceutical company, but nothing really stood out till I got to the very end. Literally, the very last line in their financial disclosure had a tidbit of information that sparked some hope in the investors, even gave them room to speculate. And you can see that in the charts. She was running hard earlier today, but she has fallen down and is now sitting on her strong SMA. But I'm not too sure what this tidbit of information is actually all about. So you may want to keep your eye on SPAM. SPAM finished today at 0068 with almost 24% gains. She's on the pink tier and current, has a verified profile. That is one of the two ticks I tell you to always look for. The other one, which is not here, is the verified transfer agent. Now, if you're just day trading the stock, these aren't too relevant. But if you're going to be in a stock for a while, look for both those green ticks. They have a lot of information being validated behind the scenes, so they are important. So what does SPOM do? Well, as I told you, they are a pharmaceutical company. The main business scope of the group includes biopharmaceutical research and development, development and sales of medical informization software, medical high-tech introduction, production, and sales of medical quality supplies, dietary supplements, medicine, as well as agents and sales of medical equipment supplies. So what was the relative volume around this one line in the financial report? Woo! Wow, that's a huge jump. Went from 385,000 shares to over 18 million. That is more than 50 times her normal volume. That's a serious jump. All right, they don't list a float over here. I mean, they do, but I normally don't trust that number, so I always jump into a pink, jump into their disclosure and find it, and they did reveal it. It is 33 million. Not a bad float whatsoever. Financials. Well, this is a bit curious. You can see they were tearing it up the last few years, putting three zeros behind any of the numbers here. 2019, they did $82,000. 2020, they did over $15 million. What a jump. And then here in 2021, they doubled that again to $31 million. But when you take a look at the quarterly, they have nothing coming in in June. And I just looked for September. As I told you, their most recent one just came out and they have no money for September either. So they went from $31 million to zip for the last six months. I don't know what's going on. Disclosures. All right. This is where their financials are sitting. There's their most recent financial for September 30th. They have anything else down here? No, nothing since 2017. So we're going to jump on into this financial report, and I am all the way at the bottom, folks. I've highlighted certain information, but I've already covered it with you. So this is all you really need to see. As of the date of this report, the company indicated that they would be merging with another entity. As of the report date, details and terms were not finalized. That's it. We know they're going to merge. When? We have no idea. Who? We have no idea. What it's worth? We have no idea. We just know something's on the table. A lot of question marks, folks. Let's go take a look at that chart. So we are looking at SPOM. This is a six month, four hour chart for, her, of course. We had a high bubble on a spike here back in April of just over two and a half cents and a low bubble here in September of 0045, almost a 500% loss. She hit that high and she has been falling ever since. She has had some strong bounces on her way down, including today. Not only did she have a strong bounce, but she had the most volume she has ever had in the last six months. She did get over the 200, but she has pulled back. 
Our technicals though, they show signs of growth. We got an imminent crossover here on our PPO and we just had a crossover on the MACD and she's just about ready to get on the signal line. And our RSI has been pushing from 44 up to 55. So everything is on a positive track on the four hour chart. Looking at our 20 day, one hour chart. We got nothing going on for 19 days. Today, she finally did something. Started off late in the day, actually. Had a huge jump up to that 0093, starting off at 0058. So you have about an 80% jump before she fell back. And it looks like she is sitting above her 200-day SMA on the one hour. Our technicals, they all seem pretty strong, except we do have a good, strong pullback on the RSI right now. Five day, five minute view. Nothing really going on prior to today. She did have a late start around 1.30, 2 o'clock. She started to run, hit her high, went sideways for a little while, and then fell real hard. And she is now sitting smack dab, melding with her 50-day SMA. And it doesn't look like we have a 200 in the picture yet. Not a lot of volume, so that could show up any time. Our technicals, eh, they show that solid pullback right here. And it looks like there could be a tinge of recovery right now, but I wouldn't anticipated. I think she got a bounce off of that speculation. People took their gains because it's been down for a long time. That's all par for the course. But I anticipate that this will bounce the next piece of news we get. I don't think she's going to move until we hear more. So I would put SPOM on my watch list for news not on my charts, not over here at your platform, somewhere else so that you remember to look this up before the day starts. There's certain stocks that you just want to get the news before the day. And this is going to be one of them. When they come out and tell us who they're merging with, when they're merging, anything like that, well, we've already seen that just a tidbit of information got a nice jump out of about 90%. So when we get some real facts, maybe we'll get another good surge too. So SPOM, deserves to be on your news watch list. You know, I wasn't even sure I was going to talk about this company tonight until just a few minutes ago. I think it's only fair. This is ticker LTMAY, Latam Airlines. We've been talking about this stock a lot. We're very excited about it. They just came out of bankruptcy. They were in bankruptcy for three years. Their ticker was LTMAQ. The Q has fallen off now that they're out of bankruptcy. And they are definitely in a stronger position by all means. They got an $8 billion infusion into the company. They have $10 billion in assets compared to only $6 billion in liabilities. They just closed a deal with Delta Airlines. They're in the midst of closing a deal with Virgin Atlantic. And right now they're doing about 83% of the pre-COVID business. So everything looks good right now, except that the company had news come out this weekend. And I got to be honest, folks, it's not good news. And that's why I'm sharing it with you because I looked around online and I could not find this news in a lot of places. And I'm not sure most of us are even aware of it. And you probably should be. So Lap may finish the day at 48 cents with almost 9% loss. Now I'm just going to go straight to this news because it is the heart of the matter. So we are over here at Ortex. This is a brand new site I just signed up for and I only signed up to get this Latam news. I was talking to somebody online about it and I went looking for the information myself and I couldn't find it anywhere online. So I asked them, I said, where did you see it? I can't find it. He says, over at Ortex. And he was right. And it seems this news comes out faster here than other places. So I'm gonna keep this site, I like that. Now, I've got to correct myself. It turns out that this news came out on Friday afternoon, just after 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I thought it was the weekend. The news, pricing distortion makes Latam Airlines worth more than Meta or Walmart. They tell us here that Latam Airlines, the Santiago-based carrier that this week emerged from Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, has a larger market cap than Walmart or Meta at least the way things are sitting now. You see, over in Chile, they have the common stock. Over here, we have the ADRs. ADRs are American deposit receipts held by the bank. You can think of them as a stock, you can trade them as a stock, but they aren't common stock. But to me and you, they're pretty much the same thing. Well, over in Chile, they do have 
the common stock. And their stock is trading at a market cap of $4 billion. At our ADR price over here in the state, 67 cents on Friday, we were at $395 billion for the market cap. That makes it the 11th largest company on the S&P 500. Bigger than Meta, Facebook. Bigger than Walmart. And that's not accurate. It is wrong. Now, here's what happens. This is an arbitrage. An arbitrage means that the price of something is cheaper here than it is over here. So if you buy it cheap here, you can sell it expensive here and make money just on the price difference. You don't have to wait for anything to move. Well, they're not going to let that happen. You used to be able to trade your ADRs for stock and vice versa, but because of the situation, they're not allowing that to happen. So they're going to force the price to get back to normal. And there's only one of two ways that happens. Either Chile raises the price on their end or we lower the price on our end, or maybe a little of both. Now they tell us that the company has got 590 billion shares outstanding right now. You heard me folks. 590 billion shares. It's the most shares I've ever heard of in my entire life. Now you go over to the OTC markets, it says that there are 607 million, and then we read news that they had just doubled up the shares, so it was 1.2 billion, but they had loaded up the preferred shares to cover all that debt. Dun, 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 dun. That's where you get 590 billion shares. So this is the problem right now. There is serious dilution. There is serious arbitrage and price distortion. We need to get things closer together and that could take some time. But keep in mind folks, nothing has changed. The company still gets to keep their $8 billion. They still have 10 billion in assets. They still have a deal with Delta, still closing a deal with Virgin Atlantic. Everything is still moving forward and they are growing. So don't panic. But yes, this is bad news. It does leave a sour taste in our mouth and it's probably going to bring the price down initially. Now they do tell us here at the very end, Ladham also said it plans to relist on the New York Stock Exchange. But realistically, this may not happen before six months after today. There are things have to take time to move. Things have to get in place. The price has to be at $3 before they can get up there. The only way they could get up there quicker is to do a reverse split. And I don't know if they'd be allowed to right now. Honestly, after all those shares were thrown in, I don't think they could do that. So we're going to have to wait for a little while. But I still believe in Latham. I just think it's going to take longer. Let's go take a look at that chart. So we are looking at LTMAY, and that is all the chart we have for this ticker. Each ticker gets its own chart. LTMAQ had a three-year chart, but that's gone since they dropped the Q. So this is all we have. And I'm really not interested in the Q's chart because that's old news now. So this is when bankruptcy ended. She came on the market at 44 cents, and today she is at 48 cents. She hit a high here in the middle of $1.06 and a low today of 36 cents. All of our technicals are down, but they show that they're turning around. Our RSI is coming up. We just had a crossover on the MACD and she's pushing up. Our PPO is pushing up and our ADX is going down and our PPO is going up. Whenever I see the blue line and the red line separating going like that, the price is going to rise. So it looks like it's going to rise, but we know it has to fall. So what do we do? Well, the truth of the matter is the price is in the hands of the investors. There's nothing management can do. They can maybe put out some bad news and make us bid it down. Maybe they can excite the Chileans and get the price to come up. But from what I understand, Chile isn't too happy with Latam Airlines, though I don't understand why. So yeah, we're in a quagmire right now. The stock, the company is in good shape, but the stock is not in good shape. Will the two meet? I certainly hope so. Everything looks like she's ready for a bit of a recovery, but until facts get straightened out, prices get close together, we're probably in the twilight zone of just having to wait. I still believe in the company. None of her fundamentals have really changed, except that the stock now, as we can see, has been diluted to the hilt. But will the value of the company hold up in the investor's eyes anyways? 
I'm not sure, folks. But if you're invested, you're going to have to make a decision. If you start to see this fall hard, are you going to stick it out and wait until she climbs back? Remember, this was a $12 stock before her bankruptcy. Now she's down here at 44 cents. Now maybe there is a price discrepancy, but I don't think that means it's worth 44 cents. I think she's worth a heck of a lot more. You don't throw $8 billion at a company that's worth 44 cents. So keep your eye on LTMAY. Keep your eye out for the news. Every bit of news is going to make a difference with this stock. My sincerest apologies. I know I brought you more bad news today than good. But to be completely honest with you, I think it's more important to know the bad news before the good news, especially if you're invested. You want to get out before things get bad. Now, I'm invested in both TXTM and LATAM, and I'm not getting out. That's just my personal decision. Now, first off, I'm not getting out of TXTM because, well, they're a thousand percent down from where they were, and you can only sell. And I'm not selling right now, so I guess I'm going to hang on until they come out, and we don't know how long that will be. Latham, on the other hand, the company is doing great. They've got all that money. They've got lots of assets. The business is growing. They've got more destinations now than they've ever had. But the stock is a mess. But they used to be a $12 stock just before they went into bankruptcy, and they were in terrible shape back then. So whatever the price disparage is, I know the stock is worth more than $0.48, cents and I'm not going to give it up. Now, i got gains sitting on the table right now, but I'm not giving them up. I'm going to be patient, and I'm going to watch this stock rise like I watched Hertz rise. I'm going to be patient. But you make up your own mind. Do your own DD. It's your money. Nobody has a right to tell you when to sell or when to buy. But now you know what's going on. A little more DD wouldn't hurt, though. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.